So you may or may not have heard about Netflix's new plans coming forward about account sharing and how you have to basically log into your account within your home uh, and how they're going to determine your home is kind of vague right now, but every 31 days or else you lose access to it. Now, this is very difficult for people who, one, do a lot of travel, people who maybe don't spend uh, months at a time at their own place. I know people that um, will stay in their own place for a couple months and then stay at their spouse's place for a couple months, especially ones that are in long distance relationships. I know people that travel for really long times for work. So this whole Netflix thing is causing a big ruckus and a lot of people are really upset and it's very worthwhile, I think, to be upset about it. It's basically causing people to pay significantly more for Netflix and it's going to cause a lot of people to stop using it. I will leave links down in the description below that will go through this whole Netflix scenario um, in a little bit more detail. But today I wanted to talk about why I'm not overly concerned. And the big reason for that is because I basically host my own Netflix server. For the last five or six years, I've honestly used Netflix in a very minimal amount. The rest of my family uses it quite a bit more, but even a lot of them are not using it as often. And the reason for that is because I set up a Plex server. Now, many of you may know what a Plex server is, but if you don't, it's basically like hosting your own personal streaming service um, on a device in your home. I have a dedicated streaming box for that, but previously I used to just use one of my computers and whenever we wanted to watch something, I would make sure the computer was on and we would have access to it. Now, I wanted to quickly talk about my server setup and how I have it uh, rolled out right now. Last year, I actually did a big change where I moved it off of one of my current computers the computer that I use to stream and record my videos. Um, I moved the Plex server off of that onto its own dedicated machine that I picked up extremely inexpensive. So what I did was I actually went to a local computer shop and a lot of local computer shops in especially big cities will buy a lot of computers off lease from local businesses. They'll usually go ahead, clean them up, uh, shred the old hard drives and then sell those at a pretty good price. I ended up picking up this pretty compact Lenovo desktop with uh, an i5 7400 CPU in it for about $85. Now the CPU is extremely important because I wanted to have something that had quick sync. I didn't want to have to use uh, a discrete GPU in order to decode and encode videos. So the transcoding is all done directly with on the CPU because it has quick sync. So if you're planning on doing this on your own, if you're getting a pre-built, make sure that the CPU that's already in there has quick sync, or if you're building one, make sure the one that you're gonna be putting in there has quick sync. I originally got a lot of my information for this from serverbuilds.net. They have a great setup on how to build your own personal network attached storage or Plex server. So I will leave links down in the description below for that. They kind of talk about different ways to do it. There was an HP that is really, really good for this kind of purpose, but it's really hard to find now. So that's why I ended up getting this Lenovo. So the great thing about these business style pre-builds is that they're usually pretty low power. Um, they don't require a lot of juice, so they won't take up a lot of electricity when running. Um, again, there's no discrete GPU and all of that. One of the big downsides, however, is that they don't have a lot of storage space. So in this case that I have, there's only spots for two hard drives. So I right now, I actually had to slim down my Plex a little bit to get it to fit into four terabytes. Um, I purged a whole bunch of extra, so I actually have a lot of extra space right now, and I'll slowly be rebuilding it up with things that I actually wanna watch. But all of that is running right now on a TrueNAS scale um, OS. I really love this operating system. Um, I'd never really used TrueNAS before when it was in scale. Um, and I never used FreeNAS, I think that was what it previous, previously was called. But this is really awesome and easy to use. Um, I have everything set up here. And if I go to my apps, you can see that I have my Plex server. I have uh, BitTorrent. And then I have all of the Radar, Recyclar, and Sonars. Those are very handy tools. And then I also have net data so that I can go ahead and just monitor how the server is doing. So my Plex was originally for a place for me to host all of the movies and stuff that I wanted to watch on the go um, or that I wanted to watch on multiple TVs. We stopped using DVD players a little while ago and, you know, most TVs don't have a DVD player by them. So it was easy to just rip the DVDs off, throw them on the Plex, 
um, and watch things anywhere. But I've since switched over to the Plex Premium. I got a lifetime subscription on sale for a really good price at the time. And I use it all the time now when I'm traveling. I'll use it to download um, some content for offline viewing and stuff like that, which is ridiculously handy. So I'm not gonna be doing a video showing you how to set up TrueNAS Scale and getting a Plex server running on that. There are much better resources on YouTube for that than I am. So I will leave links down to a bunch that I used in the description below. Um, but if you do want a little bit more details about my current setup, I can possibly do a video on that in the future. Now, Plex isn't the only option out there. It's just the one that I've been using for the longest amount of time and that I've already invested a little bit of money into. Two of the biggest competitors to Plex are Jellyfin and MB. Now, MB used to be uh, an open source program and then they got a lot of investments and went away from being open source. Um, unfortunately, MB is the only one out of all these options that does not have a free version of it. Plex you're able to use for free but you don't get all the features um, and Jellyfin is entirely free but with MB you have to pay to be able to use it. For that reason alone I did not go with MB because I already spent a little bit of money in, on Plex so I don't want to spend more money onto another system and maybe not enjoy it as much or have them go the same route. And now with Jellyfin they're a great choice. It's completely open source, completely free and it's getting more and more popular and a lot more support lately. But unfortunately, it is missing some really core features that I really enjoy with Plex. And that's not to say that Plex doesn't have any issues because they do have issues and they're a little bit more constant and they remove features sometimes that people really enjoy. Um, but the Jellyfin apps themselves, for the most part, are not actual apps. They're just browser interfaces. Um, so if you've ever downloaded certain apps where it basically just looks like it's loading the website, that's basically what these do. And unfortunately, as I mentioned before, I use offline playback quite a bit on my phone when I'm doing traveling, especially for work lately. And Jellyfin's implementation of that is just not great right now. It only downloads the original file. So if I have movies in 4K, it's downloading it, downloading it in 4K for my little phone. And I don't need that. Um, and it takes up a lot of space and you know, phones don't have a ton of space on them, so that's kind of unfortunate. But again, the big benefit of Jellyfin is that it's free and open source. So if that's the route you want to go, there's a huge community behind them um, and it's constantly growing. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to make this video because Netflix is at a point right now where a lot of people are likely going to stop using the service if they end up going with this whole password sharing uh, shakedown that's going on right now. I don't think the rules that they have right now are very good. I understand kind of why they're doing it, but the way that they're doing it is just not beneficial and I think it's going to lose them a lot more customers. So, um, I know my family is probably not going to be renewing it. Um, we pay on a yearly basis, so we just won't renew the year. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the situation. But I hope that this video really helped you out and showed you some different ways that you can go ahead and host your own media servers and how easy it can be, whether you use a dedicated solution like what I use now or an existing solution like a computer that you're currently using like I used to with my streaming computer. And if it did help you out, I'd really appreciate it if you like, subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below, and I will try to get to you as quickly as possible. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors, Thoughts, Lime, and Step Back, and thank you for watching this video. If you want to see any of my other tech setup videos, you can go ahead and check out this playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Saturday.